recognize her? Should I? That's a little Mo Connolly. Probably just about the greatest tennis player in the whole world. Doctor? An intern. How bad is it? You're gonna be fine, just fine. I bet you're a good doctor. But you're a lousy liar. you're fighting the anesthetic. Now try to relax. Just let go. Think of something pleasant. One of the happiest times of your life. I know there have been many. Is the story of a little girl in a big hurry. Hey, 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 you take it easy. Take, wait, stop, stop, stop. Honey, this is a 25 cent pony ride. You're not booting home a derby winner. Every time she comes in here, she wears my ponies to a frazzle. Well, she's just you know, enjoying herself. Sassafras likes to stretch out. Sassafras isn't running this concession, and neither are you. It isn't fair to hold him back, keep him from doing his best. Now look, either you jog along nice and easy like the other kids, or you ride somebody else's ponies. Someday I'm gonna have my own horses. The sooner the better. Give my pony a rest.
Maureen, come on. They were just being friendly. Number of sailors on the streets in San Diego. You wonder who's on the ships. I think someday I might marry a sailor. I made that mistake once. You're not going to. Oh, well. You're a lot of years away from getting married. Jess? Mm hmm One of the matrons quit today. Off to a defense plant, she said. Mm. Even left you doing her job as well as your own. Oh, well, she's not the kind to carry her own weight anyway. Always off having a little air or a sip of coffee. She spent more time in the bathroom than she did on her job. Ruth Ann Nieberger went to the bathroom 11 times in one day. I kept count. Hmm, so that's what you do in school, huh? I won a dime bet. Ten cents closer to buying sassafras. You know, I was just thinking, Jess. If I was to recommend you for that court matron's job, they'd hire you tomorrow. Me? Oh, Aunt Gert. Well, the money's not bad. A little less than I make, but then um, I've been at it for 16 years. I, 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 I don't think I could ever do it. Wouldn't hurt to give it a try. <clears throat> What's it amount to, anyway? Just keeping a few mixed up girls in line. It terrifies me just thinking about it. I'd be hopeless. If I can do it, you can. Oh, no. No. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're in charge. You see, I, uh, I don't have your kind of strength. People seem to sense that in me, even children. Yeah, you can make people think what you want them to think. <laughs> Sixteen years ago, I was scared, too. I... I wish I were doing more to help pay the bills, Gert. You know, it's not right, you carrying as much of the burden as you do. No burden. It's just that however much money we've got coming in, we can always use a little more. Well, let me think about it. Wish I could be a matron or work in a defense plant. By the time I make enough money to buy a horse, I'll be too old to ride it. And you just have a little patience, Maureen. You get to be my age, you'll know there's time enough for everything. things. <laughs> they kept me from what I was born to do. Hey, Mom, I just wish I could play piano half as good as you do. You imagine a grown woman with hands that can barely span an octave. <laughs> I was going to be the best. The very best. You go find something else to do. Because we're playing ball. My dad says we shouldn't let you in the game. Suppose you got hurt. When I didn't play so good, you never worried about me getting hurt. Okay. Okay. I will find something else. <laughs> That day you set off to find something else, Maureen. Your life, my life, 
A lot of other lives might have been very different if you'd decided to turn left instead of right. Watch the ball, Jenny. Thank you. yourself useful? Shag balls for me. I'll let you hit some later. Try it again, Janie. That's good. Oh, Susie, come on, move. That's better. Try it again, Jane. Come on, you're going to sleep out there. Okay, girls, that's it for today. Bye, Mr. Balsa, thank you. Bye. See you next week. On Thursday. Well, you got a better workout than they did. What's your name? Maureen, Maureen Connolly. Wilbur Folsom. Mr. Folsom, could I hit a few? Oh, yeah, I did promise you that, didn't I? Sure you're not too tired? Here, try that one. A lefty. I can hold it. Okay, we'll start with the basic grip. This is the forehand. Good. Come on, let's see you hit a few. Okay, Marine, here's what I want you to do. You stand sideways here at the baseline with your right foot toward the net. And when you start your swing, start it there. You don't have to bring the racket back any further than that. Okay? I'm gonna drop some balls in front of you and I just want you to swing nice and easy. Try and get them over the net. You ready? Take it easy. What's wrong with me? You're pushing too hard. You can't expect to just pick up a racket and hit it like a pro the first time. Give yourself a chance. Here you go. I'm okay. Sometimes if I move too fast, the hinge locks. There. Well, at least I never get a Charlie horse. Now, watch me. Here. You have to loosen up. It's nice and smooth. It's like netting a butterfly. You try it. for you regular? I couldn't pay you much. Oh, just let me use a racket. Teach me. Please? Okay. Drop around tomorrow afternoon.
I thought I said afternoon. Oh, I'll be ready whenever. Where'd you get that ball? I got it out of the trash. Give me a chance to get some coffee. in your grip. Don't try to kill every shot. Can I try a game? You act like you can't count on tomorrow. You've done enough for today. Give yourself a rest. I'm not tired. Then give me a rest. Mr. Folsom, am I getting better? You could develop into a good little player, Marine, if you don't burn yourself out. Practicing what? To be an owl? What's that supposed to be? A tennis racket? Sort of. I made it. Let's say hello to Mr. Burst. Hello. Hi. A big girl like you ought to be inside helping her mother instead of out here playing games in the dark. Uh, Gus is taking me to a movie. Now, honey, you better stay inside with the doors locked till after it gets back. Okay. Have a nice time, Mom. It's an Esther Williams movie. <laughs> hey, you want to go in for sports, kid? Take a lesson from her. A million bucks a year just for swimming back and forth in the pool, and she don't even get her hair wet. <laughs> Good night, Maureen. Good night, Mom. Hi, Jess. Oh, I was going to do that in the morning. I like to iron. You can see what you've done. Take pride in it. Maureen, all right? Oh, all of a sudden, she wants to know why she's left-handed. Can you change from being left-handed to right? Do I know any famous people who are left-handed? Was her father left-handed? Who the kid has more questions than the catechism? Have a good time? Must have been a sad movie. <laughs> no. It was a comedy. Gus, uh, has a way of saying things. He doesn't mean to hurt. Seems like I've heard that before. Oh, Penny. Eighty million men in this country and it... You always seem to end up with a kind that promise you a good time and bring you home in tears. Well, Gus is a good man. I'm not saying he isn't. I was just wondering out loud if you two are a, a match set. I have a very nice pair of blue shoes and I have a very nice pair of brown shoes. Now, I like them both, but I never wear one brown and one blue. He isn't perfect. Neither am I. And he's strong, and he's sure of himself. I, I need to be close to someone like that. 
Well, find someone who'll give you that without all the hurt. <laughs> They're not waiting in line. I'm not young. I'm not a wealthy widow. I have a child. Nothing to offer. Oh. Jess, Jess, if all your life you've, you've underrated yourself. Settled for less than you deserve. If I could buy you for the price you put on yourself and sell you for what you're really worth, I'd be the wealthiest woman in California. Aunt Gerd, I'm scared. And I'm lonely. But I'll think about what you said. You know, when you're young, you make promises to yourself. I swore that if I lived to be a hundred, I would never become an irritating old meddler. And here I am. What you don't know when you're young is how hard it is to draw a line between meddling and caring. Bye. Bye. All right, now, what are you up to? I want to play with my right hand. You were doing fine left-handed. I heard you say once that the best players were right-handed. I meant tournament players. The best are right-handed. I want to be right-handed. Just like that, huh? Look, Maureen, as far as I'm concerned, there's no better game than tennis. You get out in the court a couple of days a week with a pal, and you stretch yourself, mentally as well as physically, and you have a good time doing it. But when you're talking about tournament play, you're talking about a full-time job, giving your whole life to the game. Well, you're giving your life to it. Well, with me, it's different. I... All right, stubborn. If you want to learn to play right-handed, you better have some help. Push me. Jess, time's running out. It's, you see, it's not just me. I have to think of Maureen. She needs a father. I mean, this unlicensed nunnery that you're running here, just no good. I mean, how old was the kid when Connie moved out? Nearly four. A couple of years after that, you hear he's had it in the head on somewhere in Texas, so Maureen doesn't even have a part-time father. Gus. I'm, I'm weighing everything you've said to me. I, I just can't be rushed. I'll call you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Doing up. I, I need to talk to you. Why well, in the morning? No, Mom, please, it's important. Doesn't anybody ever go to sleep in this house? I couldn't sleep. I'm making some coffee. Will you talk with Mr. Folsom tomorrow? Hmm? Who's Mr. Folsom? He's a tennis instructor at the university courts. He wants to talk with you about me. See, if I'm going ahead with tennis, I need a racket of my own and, and lessons. Yeah, well, uh, Maureen, we can go into all that later. Oh, no, Mom, please. This means more to me than anything. What, are you playing tennis? I know I can be good at it. Maybe even the best. I want to play in tournaments. I want to go all the way to Forest Hills and Wimbledon. But I need help. I need a racket and, and lessons. 
No, we, uh, we live on a very tight budget. Oh, well, Mr. Foster won't charge you a lot. Just, just go and see him. But there are lots of other ways a healthy girl can have fun without spending money we don't have. I won't ask you for any money. I won't go to the movies. You don't have to buy me any clothes. No. No. We cannot afford it. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you better get some sleep. Jess. Jess, come here a minute, please. I can find the extra dollars. No. It's not the money. If she wants to play tennis, for fun, enjoy yourself, fine. But, but, but this business of uh, dreaming of tournaments and all those places she was talking about, she's just asking for disappointment, heartache. Maybe. I hope so. You know, and the higher they are, the louder the crash when they fall. You're not thinking of Maureen. I want to protect her. She has the strength to face anything that comes. Disappointment or success. Oh, Jess, give her the chance. Can't we talk about this in the morning? I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing, Mr. Fossil. Encouraging Maureen. You got something against tennis? No, I, I don't know much about it. I mean, it always looked like a pleasant game. But Maureen is so intense. Yeah, I've noticed. She's too young to, to go to tournaments in England, places like that. All I agreed to do was teach her to play a good game. What she does with what she learns is up to her and to you. Well, um, she says she needs a racket. Um, Here's a racket she can have for a buck and a half. A dollar and a half? Well, that's certainly inexpensive. Well, the lion's going out of business. Oh. Now, uh... I'll teach Maureen for 50 cents a lesson. Boy, anybody as small as she is goes for half fare. So the half-price student insisted that Folsom work her twice as hard. Your tournament career began at the playground tennis meet. With your mother's reluctant consent and Folsom's low-keyed coaching, you entered the 13-year-old and under division of girls singles and made it to the finals. The underdog matched with an older, more polished player, and Bissell. Love, 15. Game to Miss Conley. Maureen's good, isn't she? It's too bad all that energy couldn't be put to better use. Oh, God. Bissell's been measuring her. It's taken her a few games to figure out Maureen's weakness. Set and match to Ann Bissell. Nice match. You really had a
had a great day, kid. I lost. You got all the way to the finals your first time out. Don't take it so seriously. Why did I lose? She outplayed you. She was older. She was better. That's no crime. You did the best you could. That's all anybody could ask. I was afraid of this. You've got to learn to put first things first. I mean, you don't go into mourning just because you lost a lousy tennis game. Day after tomorrow, nobody's going to know or care who won or lost. I care. Take the racket away from her for a while. Oh, now, Gus. Look, if we let her get it in her head that tennis is a way of life, we'll all pay for it later on. You want to live on a courts, kid, arrange to be born rich. Mom, why can't you and me talk about this later? Yeah, you know, maybe we should. If I'm going to be the man around here, I mean to say what I think. And when it comes to bringing up a kid, you and me got to be in agreement 100%, Jess. Maureen, you know, I, <clears throat> I was going to tell you after supper, Mr. Burst, uh, Gus, and I are getting married. When? First of the month. And I want us to get along, Maureen. I'm, I'm counting on us being friends, more than friends. Please don't take my racket away. And please don't tell me I can't play tennis. I'll do anything else you want. <laughs> I don't think tennis is healthy for you. I think you put too much importance on it. I want to be the best at something. Okay. How about your schoolwork? That's different. Today, I came close, and it was such a wonderful feeling. If we let her go on like this, we're all going to be in trouble later. Take the racket away. Uh, evening, Gus. Hi, Gert. Mom, please. You know what it's like to, to want something and, and be kept from having it? Let me keep on trying. I'll make you proud of me, honest. Just, just don't tell me I can't try. Oh, Maureen, honey. It's all right. Now, don't cry. We won't take your racket away. No. Listen, all we want to do, what we're trying to do is, is the right thing for you. Not just today, but later on. <laughs> oh, you're worn out. Go to bed. Oh, and get a good night's sleep. Hmm? Gus, Gus is a good man. Good night, Mom. Good night, darling. San Diego's big event for junior tennis players, the Harper Inc. Tournament. How do you do? How are you? Hello. How are you? I'll Good to right see back, you, Jess. Hello. Al, Sophie. Hey, Wilbur, how are you? Of course, I read your column in the Union. I knew you were still alive. Or I have a dependable ghostwriter. What are you doing here? Aren't the ponies running at Caliente or Del Mar today? Hey, I write about other things in races. I'm a tennis buff, too, oh, you know. I like it a lot better than he does. I understand one of the girls in these finals here is great. Ann Bissell. What about the other finalist? Name of uh, Conlon, I think, something like that. Her name's Conley, Nels. I think maybe you might want to remember it. The match is starting. Conley. Six months and 600 hours of practice later, you won a second chance against the elegant Miss Bissell.
Love, 30. Game, Miss Conley, she wins the first set, six love. Did you ever see a player dance around like that kid? <laughs> Looks like somebody tattered you on the wrong horse, my love. Mm. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> Game, set, and match to Miss Conley. She wins six love, six one. People over here that want to meet you. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Nelson Fisher. Hi. Nelson's a sports writer for the San Diego Union. Oh, I've seen your picture. <laughs> well, I feel a lot of people are going to be seeing your picture. Oh, this is my wife, Sophie. <laughs> I've always said that the rarest things come in little packages. Have you entered her in the L.A. competition? No. What are your long-range plans? Well, we haven't done any planning beyond maybe beating Ann Bissell. Well, I think she's got what it takes to go the distance. Of course, she's going to need guidance and support. Maureen, anybody ever call you Mo for short? Sometimes, at school. You know, the battleship Missouri was called Big Mo. Now, I'm going to tell the world that that old battleship doesn't have the drive or the firepower of San Diego's Little Mo. <laughs> I thought you might like to have these for your scrapbook. I don't have a scrapbook. You better get one started. Oh, and uh, here's a complimentary membership in the Balboa Tennis Club. Wow, for free? Boy, that's nice. But I don't really need it. Now take it. There's some good people over there. They can teach you a lot. Well, I've got you. Well, Maureen, this is the end of the line for me. Why? Like the fella said, you're going the whole distance. You need the express. I'm strictly a local. I don't need anybody else. I don't want anybody else. Now, stop talking like a dumb little mick. You think you can be the best? Okay, you're entitled to try. I don't understand. Look, you say you love tennis enough to give your whole life to it. What do you want in return? Fame, popularity, the satisfaction of knowing you're the best? Well, that's okay. You're doing it for Maureen Conley, and that's fine. I love tennis, too. It's my whole life. You want to know why? See, when I lost this leg, thinking about tennis was the only thing that got me out of the hospital, out of that bed. Moving and living. No chance to be a tournament player again. But to enjoy a good game, to teach a good game, why not? Let me tell you something, kiddo. Someday there's going to be millions of people in this country as excited about tennis as I am, or as you are. Right now, we're the oddballs. Tennis is still considered the rich guy's sport. Slightly sissy, not really for your average red-blooded American. That's why we got to spread the word. We got to fight for better courts and more instructors and to try to get the parks department to spend one-tenth on tennis what they lay out for golf. The way I see it, my job isn't to go the whole distance with one kid or even two or a dozen. I want hundreds of kids, maybe even thousands, to be a little healthier and a little happier because of tennis. 
because of me. Hey, hey, this is no time for tears. You've got yourself a big dream, I've got myself a big dream. Here's good luck to both of us. Departing for Los Angeles, now loading. Jess! Gus. Did you think you could just sneak out when my back was turned? Oh, please, Gus. Where's your luggage? I checked it through. I'll get it. No! Mom! I... I, I promised Maureen. You made me some promises, too, Jess. Well, well, we'll only be away a few days. And if I win the Pacific Southwest... Then there'll be no end to it. That's why I'm blowing a whistle on it right now. Please. I have a chance to meet Teach Tennant. She's the greatest tennis coach ever. Sure. She teaches movie stars for $25 an hour. The greatest. She coached Alice Marvel and Bobby Riggs. I'll get the luggage and be right back. Why are you always against me? I'm not against you. I'm against a kid your age being under this kind of pressure couple of trophies that'll turn green in a year? It's more than that. And I want the pressure. Because you don't know what's best for you. Which is why I'm against a little kid taking over, running the family. You're coming home with me. I've already signed up for the tournament. And Miss Tennant's expecting me. Believe me, you won't be missed. You folks getting on board? Long in a place like this. Well, everybody seems friendly. We're in way over our head, Maureen. Gus is right. It's time to turn back. Mom, we can't just walk out now. Come on. The first time I saw you, your racket looked bigger than you did. Maureen Connolly? Miss Tennant? You are small. Maybe she is rushing things. And maybe we shouldn't even... We'll see. Let's hit a few. Well, first, uh, shouldn't we talk about... There's nothing to talk about till we see what she can do. I only saw that there's a bench. Serve. Again. I want to see some more of your ground strokes. Your backhand is late. Hit it on the rise. Yes, Miss Tennant. You playing the Pacific Southwest? 
in the 13-year-old and 15-year-old and under division. I'll be there, if you make the finals. You did make it to the finals, which was remarkable, since you played with one eye on the gallery. collect trophies for all the junior divisions. When we get back to San Diego, I'm going to have a photographer go out to the house. I'm going to do a column on you. She didn't even wait to tell me how bad I was. So bad you won two trophies. Go on and get dressed. We're going out to celebrate. There'll be another chance later. Congratulations. You were lucky. Some very sloppy playing. Your service is awkward, weak, you're afraid to play the net, and you're a sucker for a drop shot. Still, apparently, you do listen. Your backhand was better. Thank you, Miss Tennant. You have to go back to school in San Diego? Yes, Miss Tennant. All right, you'll spend every weekend up here with me. When school's out, we'll really get to work. M Miss Tennant, I, I hear you charge as much as 25. There will be no charge. But here and now, can you accept the fact that I know what's best for you? Oh, yes. A few rules. No swimming uses the wrong muscles. No snacks or rich foods. And most important, you'll be at the club to practice, not to play. No matter who invites you, you refuse. Clear? Obey the rules, we'll get along fine. Break even one of them, you'll be on the bus back to San Diego within the hour. I'll see you next weekend. on your serve. Serving is like throwing a ball. Let's see it. All right, now serve one. Shoulder coordination is bad. I'm really a left hand. I know, I know. Here, we're going to take these old rackets. I want you to throw them one at a time and pretend you're serving. Give me your racket. Good. Teach you tell me it's poor sportsmanship if I throw my racket. This is the exception, Tony. I can believe it. Once more, Maureen. So, Teach, a uh, new protege? She has possibilities. Hi, Maureen. I'm Tony Trabert. I know Mr. Trabert. Maureen Connolly. Nice to meet you. Hope to see you again soon. Keep practicing, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you. Let's try that serve again. Remember the throwing movement. Better. Let's go back to the rackets. I won't be late. You should get to bed soon anyway. Early start in the morning. Have a good time. Are you all right? I'm fine.
Morning, Maureen. Good morning, Mr. Traber. You work so hard. Don't you ever take time to play? Oh, Miss Tennant says I can't. Oh, that teach is so stern, but, you know, just a game or two. Oh, I can't break the rules, Mr. Traber. I don't think teach would mind. I don't know. You know why we've been talking? We could have played two games. Come on, I'll serve. <laughs> Shot. Too good. Love fifteen. Your ticket to San Diego. Oh, Tisa, it's not her fault. It was my fault. Miss Tennant, I'll drive you to the bus. Tisa, it was my fault. It wasn't her fault. Please, Miss Tennant, I... She wouldn't even listen to me. It's the best thing that ever happened. Oh, Maureen, you've been under so much strain lately. You know, there's more to life than just hitting a ball with a racket. Well, now at least you'll have some time for yourself. I don't want time to myself. It's over, kid. Accept it. You ought to send Tenet a thank you note. were stacked against you from the first, so you're throwing in your hand. <laughs> she never really thought I could make it. She was just looking for an excuse to get rid of me. <laughs> now, Maureen, are you being fair? Who's at fault? <laughs> Seems to me like you had a, an agreement with Miss Tennant. Who broke it? I did. Well, can you be fair and blame her for that? No, I was wrong. It's my fault, and I'm sorry. But why can't you give me another chance? Maybe she will. I begged her. She wouldn't listen. Try again. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> you really want her to take you back? Yes! Well, don't lay there feeling sorry for yourself. Fight for the chance. Honey... You're not lucky you think you are. A loser isn't somebody who gets knocked down. That happens to everybody. Loser's the one who doesn't get up after the first time. Maureen, you're not a loser. What can I do? Well, if it was me, I'd, I'd write to Miss Tennant. Level with her exactly how you feel. And I'd keep writing to her till I got an answer. Don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> That's my girl. My girl. That's my girl. I was wrong. You did the only thing you could do. I don't deserve another chance, but I'm asking you to give me one. I've learned a lesson. I'll never break your rules again. You are the one person who knows what is best for me, always. Please write and say that I may come back. I will always be gratefully yours, Maureen. The prodigal has returned. The prodigal has promised to say nothing to you but goodbye. Everyone's entitled to have a little fun, Teach. All right, Maureen, let's see that serve again.
responsible mother will let her kid go bumming around the whole Pacific Northwest. It isn't bumming. Seattle, Vancouver, Salt Lake, Denver. She's being chaperoned. Yeah, by some other tennis tramp. These are very nice little girls. All right, now, where does the money come from to send these kids here, there, and everywhere? And they're sponsored by organizations. Right, for the bus fare and the train fare. But once they get to a town, they got to depend on charity for a place to bunk or something to eat. It isn't charity. A handout. I mean, give me some money and I'll do something for it. Oh, I won't chop wood or I won't wash windows, but I'll hit a tennis ball around a court. They're bums. What kind of a way is that to bring up a teenage girl, huh? You make it sound cheap. I just want you to see it for the way it really is. Miss Tennant says this is a very important step. <clears throat> Miss Tennant, I swear to you, if she told Marina to set herself on fire, you'd supply the matches. I'm not going to listen to any more of this. Jess! Oh. Jess, you do not take any responsibility for that kid. Now admit it. You've turned her over to Eleanor Tennant, body and soul. Why don't you marry me? Just to have somebody around to bully? You find a reason to shout and yell at me no matter what. Why did you marry me? You got no time for anybody except the tennis star. You're the one who talks about nothing but Maureen. You're not happy when she's here. You're not happy when she goes away. All right. As of right now, I quit caring where she goes or what she does. And I have had all the female tears and tantrums I can stand to last me the rest of my life. I am clear enough to hell with all of you. It was a chance to test the new game I'd given you. You passed the test. It was Little Mo all the way, everywhere you went. At 14, you were in danger of becoming a West Coast legend. Time to move for national recognition at the Junior Nationals on the Philadelphia Cricket Club court. In the finals, you faced Laura Lou John, making her fifth appearance there. Runner-up the last two years, everybody's favorite. Well, not everybody's. Linesman ready? Players ready? Play. Love, 15. Love, 30. Miss Donnelly. Six four, six three. So at 14, you were the youngest winner in the history of the Junior Nationals. Mm-hmm. 
said about me going on the tour with Nancy? Huh? Well, sounds lovely. Oh, hi, Santa Barbara, Pebble Beach. Well, something's bothering you. Oh. Please, can't you tell me? <laughs> Mom, come on tour with me. Oh, you, you know we can't afford it. We'll manage it somehow. <laughs> How? Well, you don't need me tagging along this time anyway. All right. You don't go, I won't go. You don't mean that. We haven't spent any time together for too long. Maureen, I'm not going to let you do this. I want to. But there are other tours. Yeah, but there's so many things we've been putting off. You know, in my whole life, you're the only good thing that's ever happened to me. Mom. Oh, it's true. Everything else has gone wrong. I'm like a kind of jinx. My music, your father and I, Gus. Oh, Gus. But you're different. You're special. I wouldn't want a jinx. Your first really big tour. Mom. Whatever I do, whatever I've done, it's because I want to be the best at something. To make you proud, to please you. You have, Maury. Now, you're going this time on your own, and that's final. Why are you stalling? You know how to handle Chafee. Keep her on the move. Don't let her set the pace. She's got so much power. No more than you. Nancy's seated in the top five nationally. She's beaten Louise Broff, the world champion, held her own against Doris Hart. Will you stop building pedestals? Chafee's a good player, not as good as you. And the same holds true for Broff and Hart. Teach, this is a whole different class. Who knows best? You do. Well, go out there and prove it. The matches against Nancy Chafee honed your tournament play till it was razor sharp. Nancy never beat you, but all the matches were hard fought, the full three sets. She brought you out, made you reach for your best. Philadelphia first. And the Maidstone out in Long Island, the ELTA in South Orange, the Essex. By the time you get to Forest Hills, you'll know what to expect from all the heavy contenders. Hart, Rosenquist, Fry, Baker. You really think I'll get to play against top people like them? They'll play against you, and you'll win. Teach, I always believe what you tell me. But these are the top-seeded women in tennis. Rosenquist, Shirley Fry, and Doris Hart. She just won Wimbledon. They're good. You're better. Start believing it. You'll have all summer to convince me. No, I won't. I'm not going with you on the tour. Teach. My sister's dying. There's not much I can do for her except be with her till it's over. That could be tonight or two months from now. I've talked to Nelson and Sophie. Sophie's agreed to go with you. Well, I love Sophie. But it won't be the same. Teach, I don't know if I can do it without you. There's another possibility. You're only 16. We could lay low, make our move next summer. Well, it scares me to think of being back there without you. But it scares me even more to wait. See, if I'm going to do something, I, I, I want to do it now. Whatever you do, you do when I think you're ready. Of course. But, but you see, ever since I started playing, it's like I've been on a schedule. And if I get behind, I'll never catch up. I said you're ready. Make your move. I just wish I could get over the feeling the time's running out. In those first two tournaments on the Eastern Swing, you just managed to squeak by. Then at Maidstone against Pat Todd, you went completely out of control.
and you lost. The next week, playing for the Eastern Lawn Tennis Championship, Pat Todd swamped you again. A triumphal march on Forest Hills began to look like a ragged retreat. What are you doing, Op? I'm so bored. The doctor said for you to stay off that ankle for 48 hours. Now you get in bed. What's that music? They're holding the tournament ball downstairs. I had three invitations to that. I never seem to have time for boys. But when I do, this happens. Well, I'm sorry, Cinderella. I cannot get you to the ball. But I am working on a very nice surprise for you. You can be all right here alone. Sure. You stay there in that bed. OK. <laughs> You're up. Well, sort of. Well, thank you for the carnations. Oh, that's okay. Listen, should you be moving around like this? Well, have to do it sometime. <laughs> I've been at the dance downstairs real dull. Oh. You know the music sounds better up here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you know how to do this? Oh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Teach, you're here. And high time. Well, uh, Miss Tennant, this is Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Miss Tennant. Goodbye, Ben. Into bed. Teach, I into bed. <laughs> I set you straight, shored up your confidence, and you were back in stride at the Essex tournament. You eliminated Beverly Baker and moved into the semifinals, competing against the new Wimbledon champion, Doris Hart. Miss Hart wins the first set, 10 games to eight. Game, set, and match to Miss Doris Hart. She wins 10-8, 6-3. I did awfully well, considering. 
You played better tennis when you were 11 years old. You couldn't even chase balls for real players. Teach! Teach, what did I do? Teach, please tell me what! Forest Hills, the best of American tennis. For all tournament players, the top of the heap. Game, set, and match. Miss Connolly. Well, that's the first step. Next semifinals. Doris Hart again. Well, does she have a chance? She could walk off with the title if she'd stopped treating those top-seated barracudas as if they were angels from heaven. If she knew how this charming crew of cutthroats really feels about her, maybe she'd get her guard up. But they're so friendly. Put on a good show. Why not? As long as Maureen is in awe, they've got the advantage where it counts. She can't see the ball for looking at their halos. You mean they're just pretending to be fond of her? They say that Connolly is a swell-headed, thumb-sucking, wet-nosed brat. But they've all encouraged her. They make fun of her. They tell everyone that she had to bring two grown-ups along to heat up her bottle and change her diapers. I hear they've made a pact. Whatever else happens, they're going to run her butt out of tournament tennis and back to the playpen where it belongs. Well, that's what I heard. They're going to knock my butt right out of tournament tennis. And all the time, pretending to be so kind, so considerate. A bunch of two-faced liars. Hello, Teach? Yes? I have to talk to you right away. Not tonight. And I won't be there for the match tomorrow. Well, you have to stay. I've got a reservation on the first plane to Boston in the morning. Teach? If you have anything new to say to me, come to my room in the morning. 8.30. But why? Why are they all against me? Because you had the brass to challenge them. They've all had hundreds of challenges. Not from anybody who's just 16. They're going to finish you off because they can't stand the idea of anybody so young being where they are. I thought they were my friends. You don't make friends by crawling, begging. Let them crawl to you. I don't know. This is it, Connolly. Grow up. It's now or never. I know you can go out there this afternoon and win. You know it, too. So unless you want to trade in your tennis court for a playpen and your racket for a rattle, take your thumb out of your mouth and start playing tennis. Are you still going to Boston? I think I'd rather stick around and watch you win. Your presentation will continue following this brief. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the semi-final match of the United, United States, States Lawn Tennis, Tennis Association's, Association's Women's, Women's Singles, Singles Championship. Championship. On, On my left, left former, former national, national junior, junior champion, champion Miss Maureen, Maureen Connolly. Connolly. And, and on my right, right Miss Doris, Doris Hart, Hart Wimbledon, Wimbledon champion. champion. Ms. Connolly won the toss and is elected to serve first. Linesman ready? ready? Players, Players ready? ready? Play. Play. Marine to lose to someone with so much experience. Conley will win. Miss Hart, Hart leads, leads four, four games, games to one, one first, first set. set.
game to Miss Connolly. Miss Hart leads four games to three. First set. to Miss Connolly. Six, Six games to four. four. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, this match will be continued tomorrow afternoon, afternoon weather permitting. permitting. Run my butt out of tournament tennis. There's a Gordon McRae movie playing downtown. Maybe we could catch an early show. No, I don't think so, Sophie. You go ahead. Well, wouldn't it be good for you to get your mind off the match? Mm. <sighs> okay. See you later. Bye. Miss Connolly. She leads five, five games, games to one. one. Game to Miss Hart. Miss Connolly leads five games to two. running me back in the playpen. Nobody. Teach, you gotta tell her the truth. I will. After she wins the title. Stay in until 11.30. I'll give you a rub down and we'll plan our strategy for Shirley Fry. I want to go to New York. Maureen? For my birthday, Aunt Gert gave me money to buy a fancy dress. I want to go to an elegant shop and buy a fancy black evening gown. Well, we could go tomorrow. I want to go right now. You're playing in the finals this afternoon. Teach, have I asked for a lot? Been unreasonable? Made a lot of childish demands? Well, then why can't I have the thing I want right now? Why can't we go to New York and buy me a knockout black evening dress? <laughs> I am sorry. I have nothing that would be suitable. Can you recommend another shop? We haven't got time for another shop. I thought everybody in New York wore smart black evening dresses. I thought the stores were full of them, and I can't find even one. Well, what about this one? No, I want black. I do have one style, but it is too mature for you. Can I try it on? 
You like? Come with me. Are you ready? Well? Uh, it's... I don't know. Uh... Well, it's, it's, it's certainly... I'll take it. You two may think I look silly, but this is just what I needed. I'm ready to face Shirley Fry and anybody else that comes along. Game and second set to Miss Fry. Six games to one. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be a ten minute intermission. Now listen to me. You've got to move faster. Oh. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. You haven't got time to feel tired. You've got to move even if it kills you. Think. You're one set away from being the American women's champion at 16. Now if you try, I know you can win. You know you can win. Get out there and win. What's up? She's all right. champion at 16. In 1923, Helen Wills won the championship at 17. borough of Surrey, England, and a residential suburb of London. Since 1877, when the first championship tournament was held here on the grounds of the All England Lawn Tennis Club, Wimbledon has also been the ultimate goal in world tennis. Seven years after the championships began, Maud Watson became the first women's champion, winning from a field of 13 players. 
The first American to win the title at Wimbledon was an 18-year-old California woman named May Sutton. She carried home the trophy in 1904. Late 20s and early 30s, Helen Wills dominated the game, and then in 1939, it was another Californian, Alice Marvel, who made the center court and its fans her own. Now, in 1952, Maureen Connolly was at the cherished spot, 17, hoping she could add her name to the golden list. Lost your way, have you, love? They said my dressing room was up here. Maureen Connolly? Oh, yes. Well, well come in. My, you are young. It's a bit overwhelming, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just the word Wimbledon makes a girl all a-tremble. <laughs> well, this is where we try to make you feel at home. I think you'll find everything necessary you want in there. But if you don't, but just ask. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? It's someone asking for you. Who's calling, please? It's the press. They want to know when you're coming out on the courts to practice. Soon. Miss Connolly will be out presently. Now, shall I help you dress? Oh, yes, thank you. Oh. What is it, love? That shoulder's a little stiff. I got chilled. Well, we'll have a nice massage for you after practice. Thank you. How about the sore shoulder? Well, anybody can have a sore shoulder. Well, when little Mo has it, well, it's headlines. You know, it must have been rather bad to keep you out of the Queen's mixed doubles. Well, I'm really perfectly fine, but I mustn't keep Louise waiting uh, any Miss Brock hopes to make a comeback after three previous Wimbledon wins. Do you think you can stop her in the finals? Well, I have to get to the finals first. Please, I'll talk with you later. But, but just one more question. Hi, Maureen. Sorry, I'm late. That's okay. Practice. Is there anything I can do? I'll manage. I told you not to practice today. More trouble with that shoulder, is it? No comment. Is there a possibility Miss Connolly may scratch? There's nothing serious. No comment, gentlemen. No comment. Excuse me. No comment. Make it rest, Miss Tennant. Well, wait a minute. It's uh, it's my shoulder. Uh, I think I have a right to know what's wrong with it. It's a torn muscle. Are you sure? Positive. Well, if it's a torn muscle, why doesn't it hurt when I hit a forehand or a backhand? Why is it only with an overhead? Continue to force yourself, Miss Connolly, and I will not be responsible. You might induce a total paralysis. Hogan says it's only bursitis. As I understand it, Mr. Hogan is a monsieur, not a physician. All right, then I want to be examined by another doctor. That's your prerogative, of course. But I am confident that my findings will be supported by anyone who is an expert in this field. There's no need for another examination. We'll support Dr. Noy's diagnosis. Teach? What will that mean? It means that Maureen won't be playing at Wimbledon. Teach? 
withdrawing your name. Teach, please, can't we at least talk it over? We'll talk it over outside. I can't quit now. I have to play. You can win next year. I know I can do it now. I have to do it now. And I know that if you play with that shoulder, you haven't got a chance this year, next year, or any year. Teach! The matter is settled. Teach knows best, and that's that. It's a rule that's worked pretty well for you so far. Now, if you can't accept it... Do you have a bus ticket in your pocket? Maureen, I've already told you why you're not playing. Why are you fighting me? Are you out to prove you don't need me? Of course not. I do need you. I want your help. I just then want... Then go back to the hotel and go to bed. I want to see just one more doctor. And when he backs my stand, you'll want another one. You're not playing. You're taking a month off, six weeks, whatever we need to let that torn muscle heal. There would be no recovery for Maureen Connolly if she were to play at Wimbledon this year. Why did Teach have to say that? She must believe it's true. But to talk that way about me to the newspapers! What am I gonna do? Teach says you have to rest for at least a month. I can't rest. I need to play. I have to play. But if Teach is right about your shoulder, dear... She isn't. This time I know she isn't right. Oh, Maureen. Maybe you're just lying to yourself. No. You've wanted Wimbledon so much, so long. A person can set her sights too high. You agree with Teach? Well, Maureen, don't ask me to decide. I mean, you know how I am. You think I'm trying to go too fast? You've already done so much. You know, most people would be glad to settle for half what you've done? I can't settle. I won't, Mom. I want to be the best. There's no substitute for that. Oh, Maureen. There was just a doctor I could really trust. If we found one, and he said Teach was right, would you stop tormenting yourself and give up? Yes. Well, you remember that nice man, uh, President, of the California Tennis Association. Perry Jones. He's here. In London. I just saw it in the paper. Maybe if you called him. We really appreciate your helping us, Mr. Jones. I'm glad you called me. Dr. Buxton is one of the three top orthopedic men in London. I'm sure he'll be able to help me. Now, before you go in, Maureen, you and I have an understanding. If the doctor says you mustn't play, you won't try to re-enter. Now, no hedging. I have your word on that. Yes, whatever he says, I'll go along with it. Good. Well, Miss Connolly, you do not have a torn muscle. What's causing the pain? You have fibritis. That's a common congestion of the shoulder muscle. I'll make an appointment for you with an osteopath. He should be able to relieve most of the pain in one treatment. Then you should have a series of machine treatments twice a day to break up the congestion. But I can play. Certainly you can play. Oh, doctor! Oh, thank you! Thank you! You don't know what this means to me. I'm beginning to sense its importance. Oh, oh boy! <laughs> We wondered where you were. Where's Maureen? In her dressing room. She tried and tried to call you. Well, it doesn't look as if Nelson's going to be here for the match. His flight's been delayed. 
I go to Surrey overnight to visit friends, and you pull a sneaky play like this. I tried going find... behind my back, making us both look like clowns. I went to another doctor. I'll bet you did. Dr. Buxton, he's a top orthopedic surgeon. He says there's no torn muscle. He says it's perfectly safe for me to play. You went out and found yourself a doctor who'd say what you wanted to hear. He's given you your license to go out there and destroy yourself. I've already had two treatments. It's much better. Get out of these clothes. You're not playing. I have to. You are not playing. Yes, I am. So overnight, you know what's best. This time, I do. It's my shoulder. It's my future. It's my life. And you're not God, Teach. Oh, you know a lot. Much more than I'll ever know. But you don't know everything. You make mistakes, just like everybody else. Why can't you for once admit that you're wrong? Sure. I've been wrong about you from the very start. I was wrong to think you have what it takes to go the limit. It was a big mistake to flush six years of my life down the toilet, telling myself I could turn a selfish, empty-headed little baby into a champion. I even made the mistake of believing your sugar-coated, two-faced lies, telling me how much you trusted me, how grateful you are. I wasn't lying. I did trust you, and I am grateful. You don't begin to appreciate what I've done for you. Let's talk about what I've done for you. It's been a long time between champions. You haven't trained a winner since Alice, Bobby Riggs. And when you looked at me, isn't that what you saw? A chance to come back as the world's greatest tennis coach. You're not worried about my shoulder. You're protecting yourself, your investment. My feelings don't matter. You never allowed any. So behind the all-American smile and the pious sweet talk, there's a little tramp with a tongue like a hacksaw. Teach, I do need you. And maybe you need me. All I'm asking is for us to share the responsibility for what I do. Just share. If you go out there and play, you'll destroy yourself. I don't want to be here to see it. And don't come crying to me afterwards. We're through. girls get this far. Miss Connolly, they're ready for you. Ladies, Ladies and, gentlemen, and gentlemen, the All England Lawn Tennis Club welcomes you to the Wimbledon Lady Singles Championship match. On my left, from the United States of America, Miss Maureen Connolly. On my right, from Great Britain, Miss Susan Potter. Linesmen ready? Players ready? Play. Play. Fifteen. Love. Susan Partridge was a good player, but you'd beaten her at East Hampton, and I had felt it would be an easy win. But I wasn't there. Fifteen. All. All. Thirty, fifty.
30, 30 oh. oh. Gay to Miss, Miss Connor. Connor. Thanks only to numerous double faults and errors off the ground by Partridge, you took the first set, 6-3. changed her strategy. She softballed you from the start, forcing you to return one high lob after another, which aggravated the pain in that shoulder. Game, game to Miss Partridge. Partridge. She leads six, six games, games to five. five. Second, Second set. set. rallied to win the second set 7-5 tying the match The crowd was hostile, sure that the golden girl from California was about to be defeated and discredited. The set was 5-4 in Partridge's favor. The game score, 15-30. Susan Partridge was within two points of winning the match, eliminating you.
40, 40 30. 30. And match, and match to Miss Connolly. Connolly. Six, six, three, three five, five, seven, 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 seven five. five. You face Shirley Fry in the semifinals. You won in two sets. Six, four, six, three. Louise Brock was making her fifth appearance in the center court in a finals match. But experience didn't save her. took the title in two slam-bang sets. Game, Game set, set, and, and match, match to Miss Maureen, Maureen Connolly, Connolly of, the of the United States, States of America, America. the new, new Wimbledon, Wimbledon Ladies Singles, Singles Champion. Champion. a very large trophy for such a small person. However, you've proved again that size and age need not be handicaps. You've overwhelmed us all with your skill and your courage. I am confident we shall be seeing you many times over. Thank you, Your Grace. I've been asked what my plans are, and I'm going back to Buckingham Palace and watch the changing of the guards one more time, and then I'm going home to San Diego to work as a copy boy for the San Diego Union. <laughs> Maureen has done so much for San Diego that we wanted to do something for her. With appreciation and gratitude, gratitude for the pleasure, the pleasure you've, you've given, given us, us, the people, the people of, San of San Diego give you, you Colonel Mary Boy. Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Oh. It seems it lately as though, though every, every day, day another one of my dreams, dreams comes, comes true. true.
Or is it the horse that you're interested in? <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Fleet Arab. Nelson. <laughs> his name is Norman Brinker. He's an enlisted man in the Navy, and he's the youngest member of the United States equestrian team. But why don't you find out those things for yourself? Uh, Norman! <laughs> Norman? Hey, Mr. Fisher. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, and a fellow reporter. Maureen Connolly, this is Norman Brinker. Hi. When does uh, little Mo find time to be a reporter? Oh, I'm really just a copy boy and a gopher. She has a little style of the newsroom. Maureen would like to have a chance to find out more about you. Uh, for the newspaper, Colin. Sure. What do you want to know? Um... Uh... The basic facts, Mo. Right. Right. Um... <laughs> um... Married or single? Single. And dedicated to staying that way. Uh... Where did you learn to ride? I grew up on a ranch in New Mexico. Look, I really should be working out. Maybe we could pick this up later? All right. You in the phone book? Uh, yeah, under Jay Connolly. Okay, I'll give you a call. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm out a lot. Keep trying. <laughs> You don't want some, do you? Is this all? All? That phone rings for you morning, noon, and night. Thanks. Nothing from Norman Brinker? Who's Norman Brinker? He's a sailor I met. Oh, Maureen. <laughs> He's not an ordinary sailor. There are no ordinary sailors. You should see him on horseback. Hello? That's him. Well, yes, Mr. Brinker. I just walked in. Oh, uh, she just walked in. Hi. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, there are one or two more questions I could ask you. Fine. Is it true that uh, sailors have a girl in every port? I don't know. I haven't been in that many ports yet. Do uh, tennis stars have a boyfriend at every tournament? Well, some do. <laughs> you know, I think you and I are about the same place. We can enjoy being friends without getting too serious. Exactly. Well, getting back to my article, um, what other interests do you have besides horses? I was on the tennis team at school. Tennis? Well, how about a few friendly games? I'm sorry. Never apologize for being world's champion. Are you mad? Next time you suggest a friendly game, let's make it checkers. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Australia. Why have the Navy send you down? <laughs> All right. I'll take it up with the Admiral first thing in the morning. <laughs> How long do you think you'll be there? Two months at least. And I'm the world's worst letter writer. Now there I can give you real competition. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't want you to think that you had to write to me. Yeah, I know how busy you'll be. Yeah. Well, you'll probably be off to some other port before I get back. Probably. Maybe if you're not, maybe we could pick up where we left off. Mosi, how do you really feel about me? Feel about you? Well, I love you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. I guess this means we're still at the same place. <laughs> I'm trying hard to keep up with you. <laughs> you went to Europe that summer of 1953 to try for the Grand Slam. 
to win the Australian, French, English, and American championships in a single year. Don Budge was the only man ever to hold all four titles at the same time. In spite of some sharp play from Doris Hart, you left Paris the new French champion. And across the channel at Wimbledon, it was again Hart and Connolly in the finals. And you had three out of four. Only Forest Hills left. A good year. You're first on your own. Somehow our paths just never seem to cross. Plans now. Are you going to take a holiday? I'm going back Excuse to San Diego. Me. Excuse me, uh, Miss Connolly, there's a telephone call for you in Mr. McCauley's office. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you. Overseas call for you, dear. Oh, hello, operator. She's here now. Thank you. Hello? <laughs> Congratulations, Wall. <laughs> Nelson, how did you find out so fast? We just got word over the wire. You're on your way for the Grand Slam, kiddo. And we're proud of you. How's Sophie? She's just fine. Listen, hold on now. Someone here wants to talk to you. Hold on. Mosey, congratulations. Norman! Norman, all this makes it almost perfect. Oh, if only you were here. Maybe next year. Let's plan on it. Maureen, I've been waiting to tell you this until after the match today. I'm being shipped out. When? Tomorrow. You won't be there when I get home? I'll be at sea five months. Oh. We're never gonna have any time together. Oh, sure we will. Years and years. Look, this is costing Nelson a bundle. I'll keep writing. I love you, Bright Eyes. I love you. Norman. Sorry, love, but, but could you use this? The coat isn't a waterproof, and it belongs to Her Grace, the Duchess of Kent. <laughs> Sorry. did it all. You won the Grand Slam. The following year, you won Wimbledon again. For the third time. All right, Jerry. I'll tell her. Bye-bye now. Maureen, that was Jerry Timmons again. Oh, oh, he is persistent. And a very nice young man. No argument. You know, it wouldn't hurt you to go out with Jerry or some of the others. I don't have time. You're still sweet on Norman. Mom, I just don't think it's a good idea for me to be involved with anyone right now.
Hi, sweetheart. Mom. Sorry to change our lunch plan, Sophie, but uh, they tell me the food's not bad here. Dr. Dorman. What's happening? They're giving you more plasma, dear. Oh, they rush me here at 100 miles an hour, and then what? I wait and wait and wait. <laughs> you know, I'm not good at waiting, Ma. Norman, does Norman know? Nelson has put a call through to the naval base. Nancy Chafee called, and she's, uh, she's on her way here. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> she's probably bringing her a racket. <laughs> Tell her to book a court. I'll be right there, right there. Tell me what? Maureen, what? Maureen. Your right leg, all the leg and calf muscles have been severed, and the fibula bone is shattered. Can it be saved? I can try to repair. Oh, ordinarily, in such cases. Save my leg, please. It'll be long and painful, with no guarantees. I understand. Mo, this may be the toughest game you ever faced. I've been told I do best when I'm the underdog. In four days. My leg. Dr. Kimball says you should heal nicely. Of course, you have to have therapy. But will I be able to play? Um, the doctor wants to talk to you. Have you ever seen anything like this? These flowers? Mom, he must have said something to you. Well, I, uh, I, I really feel that that's between you and him. Have you ever seen so many flowers and telegrams and cables, letters? Norman? Uh, he phoned. He wanted to fly right back, but the Navy's refusing to give him leave, and he's very angry. The telegram. I told you, never trust a horse, teach. <laughs> Who said those? Oh, Wilbur, Fossil. <laughs> he says, hang in there, you stubborn little mick. <laughs> well, welcome back to the world. You saved my life. We've never been introduced. I'm Dr. Kimball. Bruce Kimball. I'll just slip down and get a cup of coffee. Mom hates to face bad news. How about you, Mo? I guess I take after my father. How bad is it? Well, it's not bad at all to most girls. Two or three months you'll be able to Enjoy all normal activities. Tournament tennis isn't exactly a normal activity. No. Mo, your tournament days are over. The leg will never hold up to that kind of punishment. Accept it. Thank you for leveling. The losses to the tennis world. We do have plenty of other careers to choose from. 
Newspaper work, teaching, wife and mother. Doesn't that require a husband and a father? Mm-hmm. And the line forms on the right. <laughs> See you tomorrow. I guess your mom probably told you. I uh, tried to fly out the day it happened. Usual red tape. They finally got tired of me calling the Pentagon. Uh, I want you to know that the Secretary of the Navy himself personally authorized my leave. He's a big fan of yours. This is my room. Anyway, I'm uh, sorry it took me so long to get here. Oh, you really didn't have to come at all. Mosi, I... Uh... A few weeks of therapy and I'll be as good as new. Better. Is that what the doctors say? That's what I say. Of course, it'll be a full-time job. Meaning no room in your life for anything else or anybody else. Look, Maureen, I, uh, I talked to Nelson and Sophie. They told me what the doctor said. No more tournament tennis? Finished at 20. <laughs> Just starting. Look, you had a dream once, a big one. You made it all happen. Okay, time for a new dream. I need you, Maureen. You need me. This accident, it hasn't changed what's between us? Or what isn't between us? I love you, Maureen. In an emotional crisis like this, people tend to let their feelings take over. They rush into commitments that they'll regret later. Will you marry me, Maureen? Norman, you don't understand. Right now, I don't know who I am. What I am. I'm nobody. Nothing. I want to make you unhappy. Then quit stalling and say you'll marry me right away. I don't know. Don't try to hold me out with these. You're wasting time, Marine. That's not like you. Let's get this new life of ours started. What do you say? Oh, Norman, I do love you. And I do need you. And I will marry you. And I will marry you. But right now, please, just hold me tight. I couldn't make it to the wedding, but everybody said you were a radiant bride. Then the years got away from me. You had two daughters, Norman was very successful, but the sports page crowd still remembers you as little Mo. Sixteen years after our famous split, I'm still fielding questions about you. Teach, you saw Langland and Moody play. You coached Alex Marble. Do you think little Mo was the greatest? At her peak, I think Maureen could have beaten anybody. Have you ever told her that? She reads the paper. She knows how I feel. I've got a lesson. Thanks, Teach. Hi, uh, Eleanor. Are you sure you won't change your mind? I see no reason to. Maybe there is. She's dying. Cancer. They're planning a picnic at Balboa Park on Sunday. I'm sorry. Give my best to Sophie. Feeling all right, Brad? Yeah, fine. You stay here. <laughs> Sounds like an order. It is, and don't cross me. I'll go to Fong's pick up our food. Don't forget, I want lots and lots of shrimp. <laughs> yes, Medea.
This is nice. Do we have to go back to Dallas tomorrow? Reservations are all made. I wish the four of us could stay here for always. Oh. oh. I just knew you'd like San Diego. And I wanted you to see all the places where I grew up. Now, when you think of me, you remember the old house on Idaho Street? The university tennis courts? In this park? Nice memories, huh? Hey, none of that. The three of us have an agreement, remember? I keep thinking of things I want to share with you. Books. Oh, there's so many books I want you to read. When I get home, we'll go on a shopping spree and buy some of them for you. Hmm? Heidi, the Little Women, and Alice in Wonderland, and Hans Brinker, and Tom Sawyer. Oh, I couldn't bear to think of you missing Tom Sawyer. And then there will be more grown-up books, too. I want you both to have a copy of Amy Vanderbilt's Etiquette. It'll answer a lot of questions that'll come. Of course. I hope one day you'll have someone else at home to answer your questions for you. I don't want anybody else to take your place. Nobody could. No, she wouldn't be taking my place. I'm your mother. She'd be your stepmother. But daddy's wife. I want you always to remember that. If Daddy does marry again, it'll be because he's found someone he loves very much. Someone who loves him. And remembering that, I know I can count on both of you to be kind and helpful for his sake and for mine. Having trouble with your service? What service? Serving is like throwing a ball. Let's see it. Your shoulder coordination is bad. Everything's bad. Eight old rackets. That's a new one on me. Why would anybody want eight old rackets? I'm playing an octopus.
On the eve of Wimbledon, June 21st, 1969, Maureen Connolly Brinker, Little Mo, died of cancer at the Baylor Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. She was 34 years old.